Hey everybody, welcome to another gg.co.uk video with me, Daryl Carter. Today I'm joined by the fabulous dual champion jockey, Paul Hannigan. He's kindly given up a little bit of his time to have a chat with us. Paul, first and foremost, how are you? How are you keeping in this current climate, mate? Yeah, very well, thanks, Daryl. Um, it's uh, it's a bit different, isn't it, at this time? Uh, I think for all of us, it's 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 been a hard, what, well, come up to a year now, isn't it? Jeez, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, I I usually take a little bit of time out through through the winter, um, just to have a bit of a break and recharge. Um, I didn't really expect. I thought I'd be back riding a bit sooner than that I am now. But obviously, uh, COVID's uh, paid price to that a bit because um, you know if, if people don't don't, don't know, my, my wife's actually secretary to Richard Fahey. so uh, we, we we've got two boys, um, so I'm doing a little bit of the homeschooling, uh, believe it or not. And uh, how are you I'm getting a, on with that? Um, I, I don't think I'm gonna make a teacher in in in, in any <laughs> up and coming time, and I think my kids will agree as that with that as well. But uh, we're kind of uh, we, we we're kind of trying to change it about a little bit, you know. Um, my wife comes home from from secretary duties, and I then go 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 to the gym. But uh, yeah, ho hopefully I'll be I'll be back riding soon. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I just wanted to—I want to touch on the first one of the first things I want to touch on with you was uh, was winning those back-to-back -back jockey championships in, in in 2010 and 2011. Both years went down to the final day when you beat Husey and then Sylvester. Do you have a little bit of back and forth with those guys about that time, or did you at the time? And and, and how did it feel finally just becoming champion jockey on those occasions? Well. I mean, he, he, even before that, Daryl. I mean, I was I was champion apprentice in two thousand and two, um, and I didn't really think it could get much better than that. You know, a kind of a lad from Warrington, um, you know, in between Liverpool and Manchester, not really a racing background, to win champion apprentice. Um, I thought, well, this 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 is surely got to be the highlight. So then, to become not only champion apprentice but two times champion jockey was, you know, a massive not only for me, but for my parents as well. Um, because it, it, it was, I had to work very hard. And that's what I keep trying to tell, like the younger kind of kids coming through or not even in racing, maybe, you know, it just depends how much you want it um, and how hard you actually try. Um, you can actually get your dreams in life. But um, yeah, I mean, the first, the first time 2010 was a bit of a blur because it, it kind of, you know, I, I was coming along nice and steady with Richard, um, but it kind of just came on very quickly. I had four winners on the first day at Doncaster and then two on the following day. And that it was just the ball was just rolling then. Um, and it, it was just pretty, pretty amazing. But I think that the most thing I was really chuffed to bits with was doing it the following year because, you know, obviously you're going to get a lot of people saying it was a, a one-off, one-in-the-pan kind of thing. So... I think to do it the following year was 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 was, was that was the most um, significant year for me. Yeah, was there was there a shade of relief when you? I suppose probably more the following year. Now you mentioned that was there a shade of relief because I don't think most people realise how much hard graft it is driving up and down those motorways, putting ridiculous hours in to, to you know to get those rides. And I mean, you've got to be on it every day, haven't you? Twenty four seven, Daryl. 24-7. I mean, I mean, it's changed now as well because, you know, in 2010, the championship ran from March to November, where it's not that long now. Um, so, obviously, uh, you had two meetings as well. So, I won't bore you to death, but maybe, maybe, maybe a normal kind of day was, you know, riding out for Richard in the morning, probably doing six lots in the morning, and then driving on to somewhere like, say, Haydock for the afternoon meeting. And then maybe on to Carlisle for the evening meeting. So sometimes having 12 rides in a day, um, most of the time driving myself. I mean, looking back, I mean, how it's nuts, nuts. Yeah. absolutely nuts. And I mean, I think, um, you know, just touching on basically the, 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 the new rule about having the, 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 just the one meeting now rather than two, I think makes total sense because, I mean, if people, could have seen me doing some of the stuff trying to get to two meetings in a day. I mean, I'd be locked up now, you know, it was just <laughs> crazy, absolute crazy. It must have had a, a quite a, an effect on your home life as well. But I suppose you didn't really have a home life for that period, did you? No, and I, and I think that's what some people can't really see, you know. I mean, 
look, at, at, at the time you go with the flow and, and, and that's your job. But looking back, I mean, some of the stuff was crazy. I mean, it was, as we say, 24-7. I mean, you know, my poor wife, we had two young kids yeah. growing up. I mean, she was like a single mother, basically. You know, I mean, no one seen me. It was just, I was up in the mornings and then getting back at, at, at nights. And, you know, when I was getting up in the mornings, they were in bed and I was coming back and they were in bed as well. So it was... Uh, but you know what? I mean, I wouldn't change anything. You know, I'm, I'm putting it like a bit of a down on it all, but no, I wouldn't change not, no. anything. You know? Just being honest, just being honest about the hard work yeah. it takes and the graft, take, and, and people need to hear that because it it is ridiculous. Really, yeah, I'm just I'm just being as honest as I can. It is hard work. You know, it is very very hard work, but it it, it was all worth it in the end. Was it? Was I suppose you then got the call from uh, Sheikh Hamdan to become the retained rider after you won your second championship, was it? Was that decision made a little bit easier to go out to Dubai for, for you know, and split your time between Dubai because of how much work you had to do for the championship, championship jockey riding up and down the country? Did that come into your decision-making when you took that job? And how does that come about? I assume you don't just apply for it or put a CV in. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a great question, mate, because... Um... I mean, to, to, to the first question, I mean, it was just, you know, I, I don't think I probably could have carried on doing another year of champion jockey. Um, mm. I mean, you know, two meetings a day. I mean, it really just kind of wear, wear, wears you down in the end. I mean, I, I mean, I, I lost so much weight as well, you know, just, just the travelling and physically, mentally of it all. So I think in the back of my mind, I was a little bit worried Um about you know locking horns with someone else again I mean you know you can't forget that you know first the first one was with Husey and it went down to the wire and the second one was with D'Souza and that went down to the wire you know it wasn't as though like I could take my foot off the gas mm. for you know from from March to November it was constantly you know metal to floor every day um, and I just thought you know what I, I couldn't uh, carry on but um Probably not many people know this, but the first time I got the call <clears throat> for the Sheikh Camdam job, I actually turned it down because I, I was I was happy, you know, I was happy where I was. I was I was happy with Richard, you know. Things couldn't really be going much much better in in my life, um, so I actually turned it down the first time when um, oh wow the the you know the gentleman of of, of Angus Gold uh, rang me. Um, so yeah, not not many people know that. I don't think. What does he? What do they say on the phone? I don't want to intrude too much, but I'm just, I'm just fascinated. What do they say on the phone to you? Do they, is it just a case of do you want to ride for, for the Prince of Dubai <laughs> as a retained jockey? Or yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, I don't think they have to say much now because um, obviously I've, I had a few rides for Sheikh Hamdan and and met Angus Gold a few times. I think I had a few ta few rides for the you know uh, Southern trainers down the south. So. Obviously, I've got his his number stored in my phone. So, you know, I think obviously when you see Angus Gold flash up after seeing Richard Hills, hearing rumours about Richard Hills is retiring, then the alarm bells kind of start ringing, don't they? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, it it was it was just I think Angus, you know, came straight to the point really, and 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 asked if I. Wanted to become retained rider to shake cam dead, but it's it's a lot to it's a lot to digest, you know, <laughs> yeah, a lot to take here. Um, when you was over in Dubai, obviously riding for different trainers over there, probably expecting or expecting a lot of you giving your shake cam down retained rider, and probably expecting you to do different things as you, than probably Richard Fahey would have done. Did, were there any moments when you? perhaps got a bit of a bollocking off a, off a trainer out in Dubai or a bit of an ear lashing for, for not doing something their way? Because I assume that Richard uh, Fahey would have, you know, you got to the point where you, you just were allowed to do, you know, he had enough confidence in you to do your own thing and, and there was no instructions given, I would assume. Mm, it's probably the hardest part, Daryl, because Sheikh Hamdan, um, you know, including Dubai and over here, there's probably about, 15 to 20 trainers, um, you know, who've, they've all kind of got their own jockeys and they like to do their own kind of thing. So sometimes it was very difficult to kind of, I wouldn't say get on the same wavelength, but, you know, 
I think the hardest part was trying to keep everyone happy. Um, yeah. You know, and 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 I think Sheikh Hamdan likes his horses ridden a certain way, and you know, certain trainers didn't kind of like that way. So, I think the hardest part for me was to try and, you know, especially being with Richard, who, you know, I was twice champion jockey with him, and you know, he didn't even have to say one order; he just kind of let me go out and and do my own thing, which, which, which he does now. Um, so. I think that was probably the one, one one of the hardest things to try and try and try and get. Yeah. Just just to close that period off with, with Shake Hand, Dad. How I suppose it's the same sort of question. How does that ask how the race it begins? How does it end? And I know you said before that in an interview that you were disappointed when it ended. We would perhaps disappointed the way it ended. Did you leave on amicable terms or? Or how how does that how does the phone is it the same phone call that you get when you start as to when you as to ultimately when you end really? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, we 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 definitely left on great terms. You know, I, I would That's never good. kind of never kind of leave anything that that way. And and I think really, I mean, look, I was disappointed the way it ended, but the way it went was was you know for me was you know I, I rode I think it was about eight group winners for them and you know a classic winner. And, you know, we had so much success. I think it just really came down to was that when I first kind of got the job, they 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 really had nothing at, at, to go to war with at Stud. So I think when we had such a good season with the likes of uh, Morahar and uh, Tagruda, and, you know, Mukujam, I could go one and on, but unfortunately unfortunately for me they they didn't last very long racing um and 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 they went to stud and i think 2016 was kind of a year that i'd kind of like to forget because it was just uh, nothing came along i'm i'm afraid um but you know pe- pe- people always ask me about 2016 and 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 you know losing the retainer but for me i think what stands out more was in 2016 was that uh Obviously, I lost a job, but a lot more important things happened that year. Like my very close friend, Freddie Talicki, um, had a life-changing fall at, at, at Kempton. Um, yeah. You know, a very good mentor of mine, Tom O'Ryan, uh, people will remember, um, passed away that year. So, you know, I, I think really you've got to put, put things in, into perspective, mate. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 the, and the job itself is a, is a minuscule minis- 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 part of life isn't it you yeah. know and yeah uh, and you ultimately ultimately went back to uh richard fahey and uh you two obviously have got a great relationship i mean are you are you mates as well as the the boss and you know boss and employee type relationship are you, are you friends Do you have a laugh yeah i mean it's quite a good relationship we have i mean you know i think i think what makes it worse is uh, think what makes it work think think what makes it happen is i know who the boss is you know I mean, you can go out and you can be best mates and you can go for a pint and you can have a few drinks. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's the boss. And if he wants his horses ridden that way, I ride it that way. But I think the one thing that, that's, that's worked, he's always had a lot of faith in me. And for a, a trainer to have faith in you um, goes a long way. Um, yeah. You know, and don't forget, I mean, I started off at Malcolm Jefferson's when I was 17. Um for some reason wanted to be a jump jockey I must have been absolutely absolutely mad um, <laughs> but then got passed on to Richard since the age of like just turned 18 so it, it, it's a long long time to, 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 to be with someone I don't think there's been that many uh, you know kind of relationships that, that, that's lasted um, quite so long What is the best horse you feel that you've ridden? Now I've, I personally have it down to two I have Muhara and, and Tagruda, uh, Tagruda, mm. sorry. Um, what is it like sitting on a horse going over six furlongs as fast as Muhara? I think Muhara is definitely the best sprinter I've, I've, I've sat on. I mean, for him to win, you know, he won everything in mm. in 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 that 2015, didn't he? I mean, I won, I won three group races on him. Um, missed out on the first one because we were kind of trying to get his, his trip right um, and that took a while but I think sitting on a horse like Muraha with he's got gears as well he, he kind of got quicker with age and um, is it so frightening? I think, <laughs> uh, no I wouldn't say frightening I think um, it, it's just that kind of buzz that 
that kind of feeling that when you know when you're on a good one and you know I mean when he won the champion sprint I mean I, I, I could have told you he was, was going to win about four down you know <laughs> I mean he, he literally never came off the bridle I mean he was so good that day on, on, on ground that he liked but you know we're talking about sprinters I mean you mentioned Tagruda um, you know a middle distance horse there and you know for, for, for the horse to run over that type of trip and to have gears as well was 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 quite incredible but listen I've been very lucky for my career I've sat on some some great horses you know like before I got the Hamdam job your horses like uh, Mason um, mm. you know Warren Bassett what, what's been the big talk of quite a lot of people now having just been sold to stud who's not doing too bad is he um, so yeah I, I, I've, I've been blessed really to split the two, do you, as a jockey, do you have a? It might not sound like a silly question, but do you have a preference over distances that you ride? Like, do you find that you ride better over six furlongs, or do you prefer middle distance races? Is that something jockeys have, or is it? Am I talking absolute nonsense? <laughs> no, no, no. Good question again, because I think some jockeys it would suit rather than some. Some sometimes I think I've made decisions in sprint races where I've, I've not really thought about it, and it's happened like a, a flick of a switch, and it and it's paid off and won. Where sometimes in say like a mile and a half, longer distance races, you can kind of just think about the situation a bit too long, and by the time you've thought about that, the race is over. So, you know, I, preferably it, it doesn't really bother me, but I, I can well imagine that it, it it would suit some people better. You know, having having not too much time to think about it, or vice versa. Um, you made your comeback not long ago from a terrible, terrible injury. How are you? Was it three vertebrae you broke in your back? How are you getting on now? Are you feeling any effects from that now, or are you back to full full health? No, touch, touch wood, Daryl. I've I've been okay. I mean, um, the operation was uh, the turning point. Um, you know, so I got operated on it. Was my T T three, T five, and T six what fractured, and the T six was 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 pretty pretty crushed altogether. Um, so. Uh, it was only I was just trying to trying to really let it let it all you know get get better without having the operation. But it got to a stage where I, I, I couldn't. You know, I was just in too much pain, and it wasn't going healing as quick as as what I'd like. So the operation, I, I wish I'd done it a little bit sooner. But hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? Um, mm. So yeah, the operation went went very well. And I say operation, it was kind of keyhole surgery where I won't bore everyone, but. You know, I've not got metal rods sticking out of me everywhere. It, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was kind of like they 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 insert like a like a cement type of mixture which goes around the fracture, and um, it was it, it, it's more kind of stable now than, than than it's ever been. So, I think if they turned round to me and said, "Look, if you have another fall such and such, then you're going to be in trouble," then I probably would have called it a day there and then. But um, I must admit, I thought I'm I'm struggling to get back. I did. Bloody hell, mate! It's it's, it's crazy because it's a blink of an eye, everything can change, can't it? And uh, did it give you a, 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 a I suppose a, a new outlook on life? Oh, absolutely. I mean, on the on on the day of the fall, it, I was kind of it was probably this time last year actually where mm. I kind of made made my comeback and you know. Uh, blow the cobwebs away and start back just before the season starts. So um, yeah, it was like a, a rainy day at that kind of rainy night rather than Newcastle, and literally just it happens. It you know it clipped heels and and there I am and I'm on the floor and I think it's probably the scariest thing of my life because when you eventually come round, the first thing you do is try and get up and get back to your feet, and I couldn't get up. Um, I couldn't move. Uh, couldn't get my. I couldn't get my breath for some reason, and um, I thought straight away that if I ever uh, done a lung or something like that. But mm. I think. I think what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the moment where, you know, there's so many things going through your head when you're trying to get to your feet and you can't move your feet, and I can only imagine what you know. As I say, my 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 good mate Freddie is being through. You know, he's been mm. a big, yeah. huge, huge inspiration to me um yeah. but that's kind of how it started in the 40s I'm, I'm in i'm in big trouble so the kind of um 
it, it, it really put things into perspective for me. I was getting a second chance like I have now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, mate, look, you've, you're one of 25 flat jockeys in British history that have ridden 2,000 winners. How, like, how does that feel? Going from that scenario where, you know, you, you almost have a race ending injury to being able to look back on a statement that you are one of tw- a fewer than 25, I think, actually, uh, jockeys in British history to have ridden 2,000 winners. How does that feel? Yeah, I, I can feel a book. I, I can feel a book on the horizon. I mean, I think it'll probably make a good a good read, won't it? You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think it, it was. It's been quite quite eventful, anyway. Uh, but do you know what? I'm 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 more I'm 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 pleased for I'm really pleased for my parents. You know, because I think a lot more people in kind of of racing have, have, have had a bit more of a leg up. Where I've come from, like kind of a non racing background. My dad had a brief stint when he was young. Um, but it, it's really been through, you know, their hard work and my hard work where, where, where I've got to today. Um, you know, I really feel pleased for them. And as I say, from from a lad from kind of, you know, middle of Liverpool and Manchester in Warrington, where there's not that much racy, horsey background. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more chuffed with that. You know, I've, I've had to really, really work hard. And I try and put that kind of worth ethic into my children now, you know. Yeah. I love that. I love that you you straight away um, giving credit to your parents, and uh, you're you're a very very humble guy. You are for someone who's achieved what you've achieved in your illustrious career. Uh, and bear in mind, it's not over yet. <laughs> no, hold but, on. No. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I love that. That's just that's a really touching thing you said there. In your career going forward, what does the future hold? Let's say after you've finished riding is if you do you want to try your hand at being a, in, in terms of a trainer or assistant trainer is that a route you'd like to take or do you think that once you've you've ridden out do you think you'll be on a, a beach somewhere <laughs> <laughs> i don't think my wife could put up with me if we were just on a beach the whole time to be honest but um i mean it, it i mean sometimes it can be a bit of a scary thought because this this has been you know since i've been doing this since i was 17 16 years old so um, I, I think it would be wasted, if not criminal, if I didn't try and do something along the lines of, you know, in, in racing. Um, I mean, I certainly wouldn't put training out the equation. I know that scares me even thinking about it. Um, I think, you know, I think the, the time off when I broke my back, um, you know, I'm able to, I was able to do the, the uh, level three and that's a must for doing your trainer's license, for getting your trainer's license. So I've been looking at a few options, um, not actually knowing kind of which one. I think is another thing as well is I really enjoy helping kind of the, the uh, younger jockeys coming through. Um, yeah. You, you know, you have jockey coaches these days, um, which are a big help to them. They didn't have it when I started. Um, so I, I think what well, I'm saying is, play, I think, I'm, mm. well, I'm hoping... I'm yeah, yeah. Well, why not? Of course, yeah. definitely. I mean, a man with your CV, if you can't get a job, there's no hope for anybody else. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> if you could say one thing to, if a young apprentice is watching this video, if you could give them one bit of advice. I know you'd like to to help out the youngsters and stuff. What would it be if they were watching this video now? Well, I think I think going back to the um, early on, Daryl, a bit about work ethic. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I promise you. I mean, I mean, if you look up the 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 most, I don't know, influential major sports people in the world, they they they've all had to. They haven't just been given them to on a plate, you know. I mean, there's yeah. so much on on social media now where I think uh, young kids coming through, they just think it just happens overnight, you know. And, and it just people don't see the getting up in the mornings early, you know, the 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 hard work, you know, the keeping the weight down, you know, getting getting yourself as fit as you can. It's just pure worth it. It's pure how much you really want it. You know? How much do you how much do you really mm-hmm. want it? And I think if 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 it was to give any advice, I would think just work your absolute socks off. <laughs> I like to end this um I like to end these interviews on, on this question. I don't a lot of people ask, oh if you could have won one race, what would it be? But knowing 
<laughs> your work ethic, it would have been all of them. But uh, so I'll, I'll ask this. If it all ended tomorrow, what's the moment you would look back on in your career and go, do you know what? That that was class, that moment. that I love that. I will, I will never forget that moment. It's a tough question. It's a good question, but it's a tough one. Look, I mean, most people would think, you know, winning winning your first classic um, on Tagruda at Epsom in, in, in the Oaks. You know, it's a day I'll never forget. It's like the biggest crowd there. You know, I had I had my parents there. Um, you know, it was just something that kind of like, you know, dreams are made of. Um, but it sounds crazy, but when I was uh, champion apprentice, um, I won on one of my uh, probably favourite horses of all time called Vintage Premium, and it was in it was in John Smith's Cup at York, and I was just literally losing my claim, and I needed just one winner on on TV, just a big, big winner, just to really get me going, and that that horse won a nose that day, and he really just, I think that was one of the turning points in 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 my career, what what really kind of got me on. To the better rides in the big stage, so I think vintage premium in in the John Smith's Cup was I owe a lot to that horse. That's a brilliant answer because I asked Sean Levy the same question and he didn't give an answer that everyone probably thought he would with with Burst and Book on the in the uh, one thousand guineas. He gave a different mm. answer, so that, that's 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 fantastic that both of you have given two different answers to what the public <laughs> perhaps may have. Um, thought that you would have given uh paul thank you i can't thank you enough uh, for doing this honestly it's been great to chat to you um you you're so humble you're so down to earth you're a hard-working guy a genuine guy um and just an absolute pleasure to talk to you so thank you very much for doing this no it's been a pleasure daryl thank you